Stardew Valley is an indie farming simulator in the same vein of the Harvest Moon series that was solely developed by Eric Barone and published by Chucklefish. The title was initially released for Windows back in February of 2016, but after achieving a pretty much instant cult following status, was ported over to OS X, Linux, PS4, and Xbox One by the end of that year. Just a not so short 18 months later, in October of 2017, Stardew Valley finally made its portable debut on Nintendo Switch. A hasty two patches later and the massive indie success has now made itself quite comfortable on the Nintendo Hybrid, becoming the preferred platform to play on by many. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at Stardew Valley on the Nintendo Switch version 1.2.36. The story begins with the player's grandfather quite literally on his deathbed, explaining that a day will come when the burdens of modern life become too much to bear, and entrusts the player with a sealed envelope with directions to only open it when that time has come. Fast forward to years later and the player finds themselves slaving away amongst a string of pretty dingy cubicles at Joja Corp. It seems that the forewarned day has finally surfaced as the player seems to have reached their breaking point, resulting in them opening their desk to at long last break the seal of the letter. Its contents reveals that their grandfather was good for more than the occasional chuckle when wearing a G-Unit hat because it fit well. In fact, he quite generously bestowed the player with his entire farm and urges him or her that it will serve the perfect setting in starting a new life. So without delay, the player catches a bus to Stardew Valley where they quickly realize that getting their new life on track is going to require a grind all on its own as the years left alone have turned their grandfather's pride and joy of a farm into an overgrown mess. From here, the journey sort of plays out differently for everyone. Over the years spent in Stardew Valley, the player will build relationships with all of its unique citizens, master their chosen path to riches, and even start a family if so inclined. Overall, the story is pretty basic, particularly if you've played a Harvest Moon title before. But with that being said, Barone's love for the genre absolutely displays itself through the game's unique personality, charming inhabitants, and endless possibilities. Each day begins and ends with the player getting in or out of bed. The first few days will most likely consist of them familiarizing themselves with the town and the drama amongst its citizens while setting aside some time to chip away at the mess their farm has become. Before too long, their initially cluttered property will have become cleared out, taking the form of a blank canvas for them to begin to plant their very first crops. The player has an on-screen inventory bar as well as several tools to help them alongside their quest to, well, exist somewhere. The different amount of things one can set out to accomplish on any given day is really quite commendable, and really the only one thing that impedes the player is time. The latest patch, 1.2.36, adds recording support from Switch's onboard capture ability, as well as a lengthy list of bug fixes to the title. For the sake of this not being a 20 minute long video, here are some standouts. Several fixes to the game randomly softlocking while consuming certain items. Broken quests such as one asking the player to kill zero monsters. Players experiencing a crash as a result of saving while essential items were not in their inventory or them opening their journal with no active quest. A bug that continuously looped morning time music throughout the entire day. Improved saving times with an on-screen animation which I'll actually get back to in a minute. Handheld mode now supports HD rumble, and arguably the biggest fix is that the left channel audio crackling has been fixed, which has personally been plaguing me ever since the game's release. About the shortened save times mentioned in the update, they are technically shorter, they're about 10 seconds now, but unfortunately they're still pretty far from ideal. The animation mentioned is simply just the word saving in a white font in the lower left hand portion of a otherwise completely black screen. Again, the big news here is the fix to the left speaker crackling as it truly was maddening as one would have to completely restart their console to get it to go away for just a little while before it would inevitably return again. There are a total of 19 fixes in version 1.2.36, and it goes to show that the title was more than just haphazardly thrown onto the Nintendo Switch, but instead has prompt and excellent support from a developer who seems to be listening.
Simply put, Stardew Valley has fantastic music, 70 tracks in all, each impressively diverse in mood that does a great job in not only selling the different locations of the map, but also the passing of different seasons. The composer concerned Ape happens to be the same human being as the developer Eric Barone, so it makes sense why everything sounds as perfect as it does. There is a surprising amount of motion that went into each of the tracks that had me reflecting on the headspace of its developer and pondering if he was in fact a genius. There are no voice performances, which is somewhat expected for a title like this. In its current state, Stardew Valley is a spectacular addition to the Nintendo Switch library, and anyone who spends some time there is likely to find themselves having a completely different experience from the next person. Sure, it's not the most original game concept, and there were moments where I wish the story was a little bit more fantastical, but regardless of these nitpicks, Stardew Valley is an outstanding achievement made even better with continued support from a passionately dedicated artist. The title is available on the Nintendo eShop for $14.99 and will take up a harmless 880 megabytes of storage on your Switch. As always, thank you so very much for watching my video. If you'd like to see more like it, go ahead and click that subscribe button, because as of right now, I'm sort of making these for my cat.